boom, boom, boom. This is Jared, and I'm back. Man, I'm I'm happy to do another, another show tonight. Man, this is awesome. You guys are in for a treat. Uh, I've got a great guest. This kidney warrior is going to bring it. All right, we've got a kidney warrior. All right, she's looking for a kidney donor. All right, and this is not her first time. This is not her first rodeo. All right, this is she's had a transplant before and she's on her second journey looking for a kidney donor, another kidney. So, man, I'm excited to bring on LaQuea Goldring. All right, she is ambitious. All right, she's active on social media. Um, she's on Instagram, she's on Facebook, uh, and she is also active in advocacy. And so, man, I'm excited to bring her on so you guys can see, all right, what a special woman this is. I'm going to bring her on now, man. I'm so excited. I'm going to bring on LaQuea Goldring. I'm going to give her a very, very special welcome. I hope you guys give her a very special Warriors Quest show welcome. Here we go. LaQuea Goldring, here you come. Here you come. Boom! <laughs> Oh, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. What is going on? How are you? I'm doing well. I love the intro. It got my shoulders. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, drop those beats, drop those beats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, man, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on the Warriors Quest show. Of um, course. I'm honored to have you on. Man, I, I, as I was uh, trying to introduce you and, and tell, little, tell people a little bit about you, Man, I, I think it's awesome. You're so active. You're ambitious. Um, please, you know, introduce yourself. Tell us where you're from and give our followers, the Warriors Quest uh, show followers, you know, tell them a little bit about where you've come from and, and what your origin story is. All right. All right. I can do that. Well, hello, everybody. Thank you all for tuning in tonight. My name is LaQuea Godering. I'm from Barstown, Kentucky, um, bourbon capital of the world, as most of you know. Um, my journey started when I was two years old. I had renal failure um, when I was younger. Um, I ended up having kidney cancer at the age of two, and wow. I ended up losing my left kidney to Wilms tumor. Um, and I had a golf ball sized tumor that actually was sitting on my left kidney. So that's the reason why I lost the kidney. Um, so for about 16 years, I lived healthy. I was doing good. And then one day, I started to feel sick. I was having the nausea, the vomiting, the headaches. Everything was so consistent. Um, I went into the ER with an enlarged kidney and found out that I was in kidney failure. Uh, within 24 hours, I was told I had to make a decision, either peritoneal dialysis or hemodialysis. And so my journey started from there. Um, I went through surgery. I had a PD catheter for five months. Mm -hmm. And for five months, I, every night I hooked up to my uh, PD machine for eight to 10 hours every night. And then when I would get up in the morning, I disconnect. I would go to school, uh, go to doctor's appointments and come back home and do that same routine every day until the day I was transplanted. But um, I was on peritoneal dialysis for five months and I was on the UNOS list for five, for 10 days. OK, and all right. Yeah. So that, you know, that doesn't happen that often where people are on the UNOS list that, you know, that short period of time. Right. That's really so short. For, for me, it was a miracle. <laughs> yeah. Say. So uh -huh. but, um, I went in for the surgery as soon as I got the call. I had to be there within six hours. So me and my family, we drove right up to Louisville and was so excited to get the call. And within 24 hours, I was getting the surgery and I woke up feeling like a brand new woman. And I got my life back, you know, nice. I was able to graduate. I was able to see my siblings get older. Uh -huh. I was able to just live my life. I didn't have to be attached to a machine every night like a dog on a leash. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that was a blessing. And, you know, yeah. I went from following a renal diet where you can have little salt. You had to, you know, 
you had to look at your fluid levels. You know, you could only drink like a liter a day, if not less than that. For me now, it's half a liter versus before where it was one. Um, uh -huh. So, you know, I started having changes in my diet. And so that definitely affected the way my, my body uh, interacted each day before I got the kidney. Um, so every day I woke up, I try to do more and more stuff to keep myself healthy. But without that kidney, you know, there's just only so much you can do to sustain. And so luckily for me, I was able to live eight and a half wonderful years with my kidney transplant. Um, I was able to graduate with two degrees because of that. That's um, amazing. I, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now, you know, I get to continue to go on with my studies to one day uh -huh. do a doctorate degree. Um, so, you know, unfortunately, right now I'm still waiting for a kidney transplant. Um, I've been waiting for five and a half years now, uh, and it's it's been a real struggle. Um, I've had over 50 surgeries on both of my arms for dialysis accesses. What? I've had um, three over on my 50 stomach. Surgery? You've had oh, over yeah. 50 surgeries? Oh, yeah, on both of my arms. And I have one scheduled for tomorrow morning. Man, um, kidney warrior. Yeah, right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just it's just a part of the process, really, that you have to go through. You You really never know how important the kidneys are until they stop working. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you're used to living with one, that's all, you know, you just think, hey, I got my life back. The world is perfect. But then mm -hmm. something comes crashing down and, you know, kidney failure happens. You know, it's not a disease that goes away. And for me, no. unfortunately, where, you know, I had the Wilms tumor so young, mm -hmm. you know, I've had the latent effects of chemotherapy with genetic kidney disease. And, all you right. know, unfortunately, I'm the youngest in my family who's had kidney disease. So, you know, it's been a it's been a struggle since I was 17 and I'm now 31. So I'm on the wow. show today to hopefully raise awareness about living donation and hopefully to find my own self an organ donor. So absolutely. A little yeah. bit about me. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, wow, that is quite a journey. Quite a journey. Uh, my my dad had kidney cancer, uh, sadly passed away from kidney cancer. And so I um I I've dealt with that within my own family. Um did anybody else in your family have any sort of connection to that particular uh, sort of cancer? Uh, no, I'm actually the only one in my family that had that kind of cancer. Um, and the rest of my family members, it's been like a trickling effect of diabetes, um, uh -huh. cardio issues with their heart, or it could have been just the underlying kidney disease that they didn't even know that they have. Wow. Oh, yeah. Man, 50, over 50 surgeries. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> so do you still get nervous going under the knife? No. To me, it's like a walk <laughs> in the park. <laughs> I just go in and I can already be like, I already know what I'm signing. You don't even have to read it anymore. <laughs> all right. All right. You know, I know my whole surgical team. They know my face. <laughs> uh huh. So I'm like, <laughs> let's get the show on the road. <laughs> You've got a good rapport with them and everything then, huh? Yeah. And that's I even awesome. know how to read my own reports now. So, you know. Do you really? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's dope. That's dope. So <laughs> you're like, let me look at it. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I got to take care of myself just as well as they do. So. Yeah. Who's going to do it better than me? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. So when you when you uh, had your first transplant mm -hmm. um, and you, you know, and you got uh, a, a new lease on life uh, and you felt rejuvenated. Um, what what sort of goals did you have at that moment and to change your life or what what did you want to accomplish after you felt kind of like you've you've got a different sort of, uh, you know, body and everything? The main thing was I was happy to be able to get up at all hours of the day to go pee. All uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> people don't understand the importance. No, no. <laughs> Being able to do that. I, man, I, I have I've had many warriors that I've interviewed kidney warriors and they've said the same thing. Oh, yeah. I mean, like for years where you're waiting on a kidney, you get that urge and you never have to go. Yeah. So uh, just knowing that the kidney was working perfectly, like according it's to my surgeons. Gold. Yeah, yeah. My, my kidney started working within 20 minutes of placement on the surgical table. Uh -huh. So for me, my life started again at that moment before I even opened my eyes up. So, you know, when I got out the hospital, my first go to heal and get back to school. That's all I kept asking. When can I go back to school? You know, I was 17. I was a, uh -huh. uh, I was a junior at the time. And all I wanted to do was be with my friends. But, you know, 
of course, you know, I had to be off school for about three months. So I, you know, I threw myself into my recovery. You mean? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. It, It was an extensive recovery at home, but you know, thankfully my friends could call family could call, you know, I could see them through the screen like, hello, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, I, I may do what I had to do. So yeah, long that story is great short, uh, I would say my main goal was graduation. All right. I, okay. I worked hard. I went to all of my up follow-up appointments with my transplant team. And mm-hmm. between that and home, I, you know, I made it happen. I worked hard to get to <laughs> yes, graduation. <laughs> so, That's you know, the awesome. day that I walked across that stage, I thought I was going to do flips. But I didn't think my knees was that good. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, yeah. I, I, no, really, seriously, I do. I, I love your ambition. I love your willpower. Um, you know, and there's so many things that that really, um, dr- you know, that that I like about what you said. And, you know, because um, everybody's journey is a little bit different. Um, every person I've interviewed struggles and has a sort of has a different journey, even though it's the same disease. Um, some of them will struggle with perianthinitis, you know, with PD, and some of them won't. Um, some of them will struggle more with fogginess of memory. You know, and those, and then some of them have the similar things, or a lot of them have insomnia, you know, um, and other things. So, but for you, you know, um, you, you from the get go after your transplant, you're like, let's get this going, you know. Oh, yeah. I, let's get let's get this uh let's get this going let me move on to my goals i want to reach these things you know and so how how deflating and and how demoralizing was it that you started to understand slowly that your your transplanting kidney you know started maybe failing or rejecting and and not working as well as it did you know initially i must say that that was the the hardest experience for me out of everything I feel like I've been through because here you think you have your life back and you know, you've got your medications under control and you feel like you're, you know, you're trucking along and then it's just like something just stops. And, you know, I remember the day that I went to go see my transplant doctor and she was like, Miss Godering, I hate to tell you, but your transplant has failed and you're back down to 15%. And you have a couple oh. of days to decide, you know, which, which type of dialysis you want to do. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, those those first 24 hours, I think I cried more than I ever had in my life, honestly. Yeah. It was an emotional imagine. roller coaster. Oh sure. yeah. It it felt like in a sense that not that the kidney had died, but that I had lost a special a part, part of, of myself. You. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so that was an adjustment that I went through. And I took the initiative to get a therapist you know, just to walk me through some of the steps that would come about, you know, I, it's always important to stay on top of your mental health. So that was something that I had to make sure happened for myself. And of course, keeping myself surrounded by positive people. So I have a huge support uh, with my wife and my family back home. So that's, you know, that's always amazing to have that support and all 11 of my siblings. So Uh you've got 11 siblings. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Lots of love. They're all younger. Than oh, me. that's awesome. That is really oh, yeah. cool. I come from a pretty big family myself. Not quite as big as yours, but I've got I've got uh, there are eight of us, you know, three. Four, I've got uh, three brothers, four sisters. Uh, we actually had nine. But back in the when my sister before I was born, uh, I had my other sister was only about two days old and she you know passed away. So they're really nine. But she's in heaven, you know. And um, so, it, man, that's that. Uh, that's great. So the, you know, family support, you've got that. That's great. Not everybody has that. Oh yeah. It's common. I see people in my clinic all the time who can't even be transplanted because they don't have a support team. And a lot of people don't understand the importance of just having even just that one person to support you. Cause there's many a days where, you know, after dialysis or even my blood pressure bottoms out, I can't even get up to get a basic glass of water. And sometimes you just need that extra help to help you yeah, out. Right. So. That's, you know, and, and, and that's what, uh, you know, and I, I appreciate you being, by the way, candid with me because I, I know that it must not have been uh, very easy to go from um, having had a transplant to now you might, you know, thinking, of, thinking once the information is being delivered that my GFR is only around 15, you know, 
um, that must that must have been very difficult. And you know, and so um, mental health is very important. Um, and it's a shame on people when they they don't understand it and think that it is as important as as somebody else's physical well being because it is. Um, sometimes I feel as though it's more important than than a physical wellness. Uh, I really do. So um, you, you know, so did you choose to go back on PD or what modality did you choose to, to do your second time around on dialysis? So I did peritoneal dialysis for five months yeah. um, where I had another uh, catheter placed in the stomach. So I was unable to swim or take baths, unfortunately. Um, and so during that five month period, I ended up having two catheter revisions uh -huh. my, uh, my catheter had moved a couple of times in my stomach. Um, and after okay. that, it just kind of was a domino effect where I ended up getting double pneumonia where I had all this fluid wow. up, and I had 10 liters of fluid in my lungs, on my yeah, body 10. and all these different. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Time out, time out. I'm a big sports guy. Time out. <laughs> 10 liters, 10 liters of, of yeah. fluid in your lungs. Yeah, that it was around my lungs, my legs. Like you're drowning? Oh, yeah. Like anytime I moved, rather it was to bend over or to stand up, my legs and my feet would instantly swell. It was just like uh -huh. somebody was taking water and instead of pouring it down your throat, just pouring it into your lungs. Yeah. And it was making like a harder for your, your heart and your lungs to function. So it makes yeah. your chest real tight. And your skin hurts where your skin is just so tight, like there's no elasticity to it. So All right. I went through that twice. And during both of twice. those times, I had to be put on yeah. a ventilator for four to five days. Man, please, everybody who's watching this, please comment in here if you know what she's talking about. Because that is just incredible to me. You know, if that's ever happened to you, please comment and let me know. Because, man, that is just incredible. Um, so did that cause any sort of anxiety when that was happening? You oh, know? yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I imagine you know, here, I, here I'm thinking I just I got sick, maybe the flu. So I just kept been like, oh, it's not that serious. But then you yeah. get to a point to where you're sleeping in an L-shaped position, uh -huh. like literally with pillows stacking you up in L shape. Right. So, yeah. you know, you're like, OK, like so something's then, yeah. not right here. Yeah. So, you know, by the time I got to the hospital for that that second visit to be intubated, I found out I was in heart failure. And, you know, a normal heart function is 50 and up. I had got down to 35. And, you know, wow. for 35 for somebody, you know, that's really hard on the body, especially when you're in kidney failure. And so yeah. that made things worse, you know, as far as like fluid goes, my body right. wasn't getting rid of enough fluid on the machine. So unfortunately wow. I had to switch to hemodialysis Okay. But, um, All right. Once I went on to hemodialysis, things started to regulate. But once uh -huh. again, I went back into heart failure for a second time. So <laughs> you, you know, be kidding me? Yeah, I know. It sounds like a nightmare, <laughs> but it happened. <laughs> it really does. This sounds like some sort of movie, and not a yeah. and and, uh, and not a pleasant one. This sounds like a, one of those, you know, uh, intense like. A thriller, suspenseful, you know, suspense no, movies, like, you know. Next? Yeah. Yeah. What is next? You no, know, and, and uh, I have uh, heard, <laughs> I have heard that you know, with kidney disease, it, you know, that it can cause uh, multiple like cardiovascular problems. Oh, yeah. You know, in your case, uh, this is what's happening. You're having some, you know, some heart issues because of your kidney disease. That's scary. Yeah, it took me three years to get out of heart failure. I just oh, wow. found out um, this October on my birthday that mm -hmm. I was completely out of heart failure and um, went from 35 up to 50. So it's it's been a journey. You know, I did three months of cardiac um, rehab where I would go in and exercise with other people in similar health circumstances as mine. And then, you know, I had to change some of my eating habits and, of course, manage my fluid. Take okay. my binders, you know, that didn't yeah, change. Take the binders, yeah. Yeah, and I still had to go to dialysis just like I'm doing three times a week uh -huh. at the clinic. So, you know, right. I just made the best of the time that I had to be there so that I could be healthier than I was. So, all right. You know. So, my question is uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. So, in the, in the time that you, so three years, uh, if I understand, if I understood it correctly, mm -hmm. to, to get your heart uh, issue under control. Did that prevent you from getting on the transplant list during that time? Did you have yes. to stabilize that? 
So I was taken off the transplant list both times after I found uh -huh. out that I was in heart failure. Um, and I wasn't allowed to be uh, relisted or reactivated, as they call it, okay. until yeah. my heart function came back up. And so the goal for me and my team, both my nephrology and my cardiologist, was to focus on my heart so that I would be strong enough to get a kidney transplant when the call comes through. All right. So Very it nice. was it was a process that involved, you know, changing certain eating habits, fluid control, and of course, uh, blood pressure medications. And I've finally got those under control. So it's it's been a lifesaver. And of course, lots and lots of prayers. Oh, so, I, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that, that definitely does help. Um, oh, yeah. A lot of prayers. Um, so, you you know, so your family, um, you've got the, the family support. And when um, when they when they found out that you were having these heart issues uh, the, during that three year span, um, what kind of you know, what kind of support um, were they giving you? Um, were they uh, doing like girls night out or what, what, what kind of things were they doing to kind of be cheerleader to keep your spirits up? So my wife is a hairstylist. So she always does all these cool hairstyles on me. And I, she teaches me what, different that techniques. that why uh, you had the blue tone in it? And... Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you go back and look at my pictures, I've had every yeah. color just about. All right. Right but, on. Um, of course, having like family sleepovers. Going, even though I couldn't get in the water, I could sit down by the pool and just enjoy the company of others. They would take me on rides around town just to get some fresh air. Um, on the days where I couldn't go anywhere, you know, you could always FaceTime or just come and hang out. You know, my friends used to come up from Barstown all the time and just lay around with me all day. And that was fun for us. You know, yeah. it wasn't it was doing enough without having to do everything. Uh -huh. And um, every every chance we get, we celebrate. So rather we're celebrating a good grade that I got in school or just good news I got from the doctor. We always found a way to celebrate with a good meal, good laughter. And we always have movie nights where we invite our moms and our siblings over. So I always love that. Definitely still gets me through these days, especially with COVID uh -huh. going on. So <laughs> right. it, it was a, it's amazing, yeah. to, like I said, to have that support during that time because it does mm -hmm. get challenging when you get to those low points, especially after you're having continuous surgeries, like I'm having oh, every right. two or three weeks, yeah. you know, it, it takes a toll on both your mental and your physical health. Absolutely. Yeah. I can only imagine what kind of a journey you've been through. It's incredible. Um, Thank you. you know, over 50 surgeries, uh, the heart issues for three years, um, man, I admire your toughness, your strength. Um, you know, it's wonderful that you've got, you know, your wife and your family that's giving you such wonderful support. Um, that's awesome. I've, I know some, um, kidney warriors that don't have a whole lot of family support. You know, it doesn't always happen like that. You know, some of them, some family members don't know what to say, they don't know what to do, or they feel as though, um, you know, the dreaded, you don't look sick. I don't, I really don't think you're that sick. You know, uh, sometimes they get some, uh, you know, reactions like that. And so, man, it's, it's, it's awesome to hear you've got support. That is really great. That is awesome. <laughs> man, uh, we've got, you know, and the comments keep coming in, which is um, also a testament to your support. I'm sure you've seen some of them that I've popped up. Uh, we've got your uh, Sully Award. She's so beautiful and a good speaker. You got the terrible towel too there, right there. That's awesome. I'm a big sports fan. That's great. I think they're even playing tonight, the Steelers, but I may be wrong. Um, oh my, that's my mama's favorite team. Go Steelers. All right, right on. That's dope. <laughs> oh, my friends will tell you, phase 10, always save the day. That's one of our favorite games. That's one of your favorite games? Oh, yeah. You could be in the hospital. You can be at home. You could be sitting in the car, and you can play a good game of phase 10. She could be the next vice president. That's awesome. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kamala is, and you could be next. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, Soldier War, thanks for the um, joining the broadcast. We've got some new people that I haven't seen before, probably your family and friends. That's awesome. India Trigg, thanks for watching. Dana R. Um, Larry Holden, thank you for watching. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Latedra Johnson. Uh, Larry Holden. Oh, I brought that up again. There we are, Larry Holden. She, he says you uh, LQ rocks from G, GL, GLI. Yeah. Is that right? Oh, yeah. 
that's the group that I work with. They are awesome. All right. All right. At, in fact, I wanted to bring that up. So um, tell me a little bit about, um, cause you know, uh, it's, it's, it's so amazing uh, offline. You and I just talked briefly about, you know, somebody that, that we have a, a mutual friendship uh, online. I've never met him in person, but um, Nick Gentile, somebody that, that I've interviewed, he's been a, a co-host of mine on this show. Uh, and he's been on several of the urban health outreach media shows that we've done and great living kidney donor. But what's amazing oh, yeah. is this guy, Nick Gentile, and I hope he's watching. If not, someone please share this with Nick Gentile so that he can watch this while we're talking about him. But um, I think the world of the guy is, uh, you know, has great amount of faith. He's a pastor uh, and he also has recently become a living liver donor. Uh, it's just uh, it's just amazing. And so tell us a little bit about the work that you do with, um, you know, as an advocate and 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 wow, everybody, because I'm wowed. <laughs> well, there's two groups that I work for. The first group is CODA, Kentucky Organ Donor Affiliates, and there are over um, transplants here in Kentucky and register registering people to become organ donors. Um, so I volunteer with them and we host different events and I get to go around the state and share my story um, with different people at different events, which is really cool. And then on the other hat, um, I work with a group called Global Liver Institute and I work with the pediatrics and rare liver diseases. So what we do is, as and I'm an intern, by the way. So what we do is we connect with all these various groups of people in every different field of liver diseases um, and rare liver diseases and we're a global group so we get to talk to doctors clinicians researchers and we just advocate for these pedi pediatric uh, kids and for these kids with rare liver diseases and we try to offer them support in education and research and other treatment options so that they too can live a healthy and happy life as i can all right all right that Man, uh, that is just so impressive to me. Um, Thank you. You know, I love it. I love it when, um, you know, re whether it's recipients or, or donors that afterwards, after surgery, move on to do special things. And you've, you're doing special things. I want to applaud you, man. That's awesome. You. <laughs> that's and, so, you know, that's uh, so cool. ben, having the chance to meet my donor family really, really changed the game for me, I must say. Uh -huh. um, you know, I had to wait to the five year mark of having my kidney, but the day that me and my wife got to meet them was awesome. Like, you know, and they were able to share, you know, how my donor lived and, you know, and they actually gave me some good advice on going forth with my own life. So it was very life changing and I've dedicated my life to be able to advocate into medicine. So this is two things that I love to do. That is so cool. That is so cool. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got some comments here I'm sharing. Uh, won't he do it? Well, um, and then we've got, uh, you know, Carissa Cameron. Thanks for watching. Quality, um, you are definitely the strongest. I, did she misspell me? That's auto auto spelling. Yeah, yeah. Quay, you know. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, yeah, it's auto spelling. I'm, 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 I think it's auto spelling. Uh, you are definitely the strongest person I know. Um, so it, you know, we've we've had some other people chiming in here and saying similar things, and I, I love that. I love it when I see the support like this. Um, you know, hallelujah, amen. Um, and, and James here from Dadvice TV, thanks for watching tonight, James. Um, why do they make you wait for the five year mark before meeting the family of the donor? Can you do you know the answer to that? I personally think is for two reasons. One is for respect of the family. Uh, okay. to give them a chance to decide if that's something that they want to do. Do they want to connect with um, the recipients or not? And, you know, it goes both ways. The recipient and the donor families both have that option. And also for your own health, just to make sure that, you know, the transplant is good, you're doing better, and you're in better health yeah. than you were when you first got it. Uh-huh. All right. That's a good answer. I like that. Thank you. Uh, so great job. Thanks, Jared, for having my daughter speak out about her journey. You're welcome, Bertha. Um, it's my pleasure. Uh, it really is. Uh, I, much like you're advocating and, and what, with what you've done, um, 
this brings I have passion for this because it, it makes me happy when I get uh, your story out it makes me happy when I'm able to broadcast this and have other people share it and you know and when I hear people later uh, that have not been on the sh that have left um, and months later or weeks later get a get a transplant um, so you're gonna hit me up when that happens right oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> I'm going to be like, I need to go live and I need to tag you right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll have a special uh, broadcast when that happens. I'll bring you on. Well, if you're feeling well enough, for sure. Oh, yeah. I don't care if my eyes is half peeled like this <laughs> and I'm getting that transplant. I'm yeah. like, yeah. Yeah, we did that with uh, has made it. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. We'll be we'll be praising God and saying hallelujah. Oh, yeah. you know, uh, we did that uh, for Leslie DeVoe. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, Steve Belcher. Um, we did that with uh, Leslie DeVoe. I think she was still in the hospital. She was in her hospital bed and she was in her down. Had blankets on though, but yeah. <laughs> but um, so we've got, uh, he's saying you've raised an amazing daughter. I think so too. Um, I think that, you know, I love your enthusiasm. I love your energy. You've got a great vibe. Uh, kidney for Quaya. Um, and you know, and yes, she did, James. So you know, one of the things that I'm going to do um, now that we're talking, so that I can help you get that information out there, as I just said, is you, I, you gave me your your hospital's transplant information, and so I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that down below here, um, so that it scrolls across the screen. So there we go, boom, boom. All right, you know, work that magic. Okay, so uh, your transplant hospital here. Um, we've got the, the URL that's not clickable, but it's clickable cause I have it in the comment section. Uh, but then we've got the, the phone number here. So, uh, it's the university of Cincinnati medical center, national kidney registry, and then nkr.org forward slash J A V nine, four, six, or they could call, uh, I think they're right here. The transplant coordinators, Tina, mm -hmm. and the phone number is five, one, three, Five eight four eight three one three. So tell us uh, a little bit about your transplant um, hospital and the information here um, about how they can go online. Okay, so on, I'm a part of the University of Cincinnati Medical Center transplant team. Um, that is the only place I'm currently listed. But if you go to the national register, the National Kidney Registry website, which is on this link here. Um, you can go directly to my personal mini web page. You can read more about me and you can also apply to be a donor. And then if you have specific questions, um, you can actually reach out to the coordinator and they'll answer them for you. Or you're welcome to write me through Facebook or Instagram, whichever is easiest for you. Nice. And so, you know, so as you were explaining it to me, so they can actually go to that, that page or the mm -hmm. link and it's kind of a mini um, you know, donor search page for you. Is that right? Yes, it is. Uh, that's so cool. I love that. So, um, so again, guys, uh, you can go to that, that click on that link. Um, you can call the transplant coordinator information, you know, but call the digits, you know, um, call them because then there's a reason why I didn't put, uh, what blood type, because what I want to is everybody who's healthy. I want to call the number, click on the link because, even if you're not the right blood type, all right. Obviously, she's she's a she's got a great personality. Um, she's a beautiful person, so she's everybody's type. But most especially her wife's type. But she's everybody's type, regardless of the blood type. All right, she's everybody's type. Um, if you're not the right blood type, then you can still you can still apply with the paired exchange program. Uh, UNOS uh, and other procurement organizations will. We'll work with the hospital um, and they'll find a, a person and they'll get it all connected. All right. It gets complicated, but not, I, I don't want to, I want to just keep it real simple is that they do the work for, for her and they'll find a donor with the paired exchange program. It works that way. And it speeds up her process. Yes. It really does. All right. Who wants her to wait longer? She had a transplant before. Uh, and now she's back on dialysis. Let's get her back on a transplant. Let's make sure her life is extended again. It's a better quality of life. All right. And 
She's got a, a lot of tons of friends. She's got great support. So keep commenting, everybody. Okay, the more comments, the better. The more comments, the more engagement that this broadcast will have. And the more engagement, the more visible this is. This will take on a life of its own, just, just like her search for a living kidney donor. All right, we want this to go viral. We want this to be a, a contagion, so to speak. So to speak, I know we're in a pandemic. So, you know, so to speak, it's just, I mean, that as a metaphor. Uh, <laughs> but we want this to go viral. There, I, oh, I just said it again. It's not like a, not like a virus, but we want, this, we want this to just take a life of its own. I'll stick with that. Um, and we want everybody to share this, you know, let's, let's share it and make sure it's on fire. Okay. Because just like the show is lit tonight, we want this, we want to light this like a firecracker and get the word out for this beautiful woman. All right. So she's got, look at her aura. I mean, she, we, she's got this great personality and, uh, despite all of her trials, um, my gosh, all the heart problems, um, over 50 surgeries. All right. Uh, you know, and maybe not the, maybe not the life that you, it, you know, thought of, and it's not the life that you expected, but you're moving forward. You're surviving, um, you know, and kidney warriors get knocked down, but what do they do when they get knocked down? Quaya? We pick ourselves back That's up. And right. Keep That's right. Okay. Warriors get right back up. All right. I don't know if, uh, Nate Robinson got not uh, well, after he got knocked down. If he got right back up, or uh, or uh, Roy jo Roy Jones Jr. after Tyson hit him, but um, but we've got Warriors get knocked down. They do, okay. But you got right back up, and you're going to continue to get right back up. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and that's what's going to happen now. Claim it, baby girl. You got this. All right. So your mom's saying that, and um, you know. Everyone, please share because, again, we want to reach as many people as possible. Um, the nice thing about, you know, getting everybody connected in the kidney disease community is that sometimes there are friends of La Quea's that aren't connected to other kidney disease, you know, um, friends. And so when we share this and we're all connected, then we can get this and reach more people that haven't yet heard about this. And, you know, it's a domino effect and we can reach and connect with other people that just have no idea that she's searching for a, another kidney. It happens. In fact, it happened. Uh, thanks for watching, Donna. Um, I, I shared a post for somebody and this person saw the, you know, the, the post and had no idea. She knew the person I was advocating for, LaQuea but didn't know she was on dialysis, had no clue that she was on kidney, that, had, that she had kidney disease. And, you know, and she had moved away. And when she saw the post, she, you know, she decided she wanted to become a living kidney donor for this person. And, that is amazing. Yeah, so October, 2019, the, um, her name is Julie McKinstry. All right. She had a successful transplant surgery because of a post on on Facebook. And so this can happen. It does happen. Uh, but let's, you know, let's share. Don't be stingy. All right. Don't be stingy. All right. We just had Thanksgiving and we all know what we're thankful for. We all have gratitude yeah. probably still. And uh, she's saying we love you. Chocolate drop. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Thank you uh, for showing love. Um, and she is amazing, Steve. She is. Um, we've got an amazing guest here on tonight. Uh, so hashtag kidney for La Quea. Um, so everybody, please get this moving in a, in a positive direction for this uh, person here. Um, and even James says right here from Dad Vice TV, he says, I interviewed a person who donated a kidney uh, to a random stranger, all based on a, on a shared Facebook post she saw. So you guys, this happens. All right. Um, and that's the beauty of getting things shared on social media. You know, I'm putting, I'm going to be sharing this on Instagram. I'm sharing it to Twitter, uh, through Periscope. Um, I'm going to be, you know, and I've linked it to the, our uh, Facebook page and my own feed. So, you know, um, so we're going to all share this, uh, and we can be strong together. But we're weak when we're we're alone. 
let's join together, unite, all right, and, and make this just an unmovable force, something that just continues to gain uh, steam and it just takes on such a such a strong personality is this is what i'm envisioning for you and that's what i'd like to have happen i was just wondering if i could add something please uh, i'm uh, solo. go ahead um so something that i just wanted to say to everybody um i know that a lot of people are scared of organ donation and a lot of people say they can afford organ donation but just so that we can get rid of the myths around living donation um a living donor a kidney will always last longer than a cadaver or a non-living kidney. So for somebody like me, um, a new kidney could last me 30 plus years. And that's what I'm really looking forward to is just being able to have my life back and being able to live freely, free of machines, free of being stuck three times a week with two needles every time. You know, the freedom to be able to eat, the freedom to be able to travel to just think about like the basic necessities that you can do for yourself that I can't always do for myself. I want to have those freedoms and with living kidney donation that that's a I'm able body to be able to do that. That would give me a sense of peace, a sense of joy, and that would give me my health back overall. Um, I wouldn't have to worry about going back into heart failure or any of my other organs being at risk of failure like they are now. Um, so just so that you know, as a, Organ donor, you do not pay for the expenses. Um, the recipient's insurance pays for everything. So that's a burden that's lifted off your shoulders. For the non-medical um, expenses, there are many, many groups out here that will help you cover all those expenses. So please don't be selfish. Get up out of your seat, make the call, be a living donor for somebody. If it's not for me, at least for somebody, there are so many people out here in need just like me. And we are all just asking for another chance to be able to live like you and the next person. Um, so, you know, don't be afraid. Even if you are, it's OK. Even the recipients are afraid. But with that fear, there comes joy and excitement at the end of the road. So I promise you, by being an organ donor for me, you will not only be changing my life, but you will have a friend and a family member forever. So I thank you. I thank you in advance and God bless you. Amen. Amen to that. You heard her. All right. Get out. Get up out your seat. All right. Get up out your seat and please. All right. Smash that share button. All right. Like, subscribe and get this out there because this can be such a powerful force because she is deserved. All right. This this beautiful person here needs our help. And when we come together, we can do great things. I've already said this, we're, we're, we're powerless and we're weak when we're alone. And that's why God puts us together. That's why, all right, we come together. We do greater things together. We can become a kidney disease community, an army of people locked in arms, metaphorically, where we're broadcasting this, sharing this to as many people as possible, sending it to, as a text message, sending it in Facebook Messenger, Instagram, messenger you know every place we can uh, and just making sure that we we scream it from the top of our lungs that she needs a kidney all right man i'm i'm this is exciting and i'm i'm excited for you uh, i'm excited that we can get your information out there again it's the university of cincinnati medical center um click on the link everyone all right um start applying to be a donor all right. Um, if, if you're all afraid to, of, of no, then you probably haven't gone on a date or you've never gotten married before. And you've never proposed. So don't be afraid of no. All right. Don't be afraid. Uh, the paired exchange program generally will accept every blood type as long as you're healthy. All right. If not, they'll tell you. But then if you can't donate, then donate. Share. Share the information. Share the information. Let's get this out there. All right. She's had over 50 surgeries, battled with, battled with, kid, <laughs> with, with heart problems for over three years, too. So, all right, she's, she's grown stronger. She is stronger, but she's not going to be as strong as we need her to be in, unless we help her find a kidney donor. Let's do this together, guys. All right, LaQuea, we're about, we're about ready to end the show here, but 
Um, I'd like you to, um, you, you've said, you've already made a great statement, uh, and I'm not going to have you repeat it. That was beautifully and eloquently said, um, because living kidney donors do live typically very normal lives. Um, you know, if they were doing fitness, if they were doing jogging before swimming, they can do that again. You know, so very normal lives. If they were chefs, they could still be a chef, you know, whatever. Um, so if you would, though, I'd love to to kind of uh, have you talk about your the, the people that have watched tonight. Um, get, who would you like to shout out? You know, let's do some shout outs here because I love to give uh, respect. And I'd love to, you know, thank the people that have watched tonight. Oh, first and foremost, I got to thank God, you know, thank, first thank and me. foremost. Uh, secondly, I would like to thank my wife and my mother and my siblings, um, everybody at Global Liver Institute. I see all the wonderful comments. I thank you all for the support. Donna, you are awesome. Larry, you are too. Uh, Mr. Steve Belcher, I thank you so much. I have been watching all your comments and I've seen some of your videos. So I thank you for watching me this evening and all the positivity you've given back. And I don't want to say it wrong, but the kidney health coach from, let's see. Dad Vice TV. The, yes, I didn't want to say it wrong. So my apologies. So <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate all the feedback that everybody's been giving me and all the support and just coming out tonight and watching. I know that you all could have been in bed sleep or watching TV, but you took the hour to be able to talk to us and just listen to our story and, you know, help me get my message out there. So I thank you all. Uh, shout out to all my family in Lexington and Barstown. I love you all and I thank you all and shout out to my CODA family. I thank you all for continuing to support me too as well. And to my UCMC transplant team, uh, Beth is the best coordinator I could ask for. So thank you all. Awesome. Great shout outs. Um, and James from Dadvice TV had a, a good question. Um, when you get your new kidney and you've had your second transplant, what's the one thing you look forward to doing again besides, you know, being able to urinate again? Because that goes without saying. <laughs> I would love to travel to Spain that is on my bucket list i love it i love it <laughs> that's awesome uh, i've never been to spain I, i've been to germany i lived in germany for two years so that's awesome i'd love to go to spain too that i i hear it's beautiful there as well i've seen pictures and I, my best friend got to go and all the pictures he showed me i was like i'm so jelly i need to be there <laughs> but you know but until i get my transplant traveling out of the country it's just I'm not able to do that because it'll kick me temporarily off the transplant sure. list mm -hmm. and it'll inactivate my uh, my health insurance until I'm back in the country. So oh, okay. to me, I don't feel that's worth my health at this time. Right. So, you know, I travel within two to six hours at max just so I can get back in time for that call when it comes through. All right. Well, I look forward to it as well. I, again, hit me up. Let me know. And we'll oh, we'll yeah. celebrate. All right. We will. All right. It's Warriors good. Quest. That's right. All right. You're a warrior, and I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. So uh, anyway, I, 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 it's it's my pleasure, and I'm honored to have you on. Um, I'll I'll try to continue to promote this and get that information out there as much as I can for you. Okay. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Jared. It's been a pleasure. all right. It's been Thank fun. <laughs> it has been fun. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, have a good evening. Okay. God bless. God bless you too. Bye bye. All right, thank you. All right, so everyone, we've we've heard from Laquea. Um, she's got a great family support, and uh, thank you everyone for for tuning in um, for your comments. Uh, please uh, continue to comment on this. Continue uh, to share this. Um, thank you, Dana. You're welcome. Uh, thank you for thank you, Latrita uh, Johnson, Larry Holden. Um, many of them, uh, you know, that are friends and family, India Trigg, Donna Cryer, um, no, I'm Soldier Ward that, with the Pittsburgh Steelers uh, gear. Uh, thanks for watching, Soldier Ward. Um, and James at Dadvice TV, Bertha Goldring, of course, um, Steve Belcher, my homie, my homeboy. Thanks for watching and tuning in tonight as well. You guys have made this successful, and if we continue to comment, uh, if we continue to share this, then again, this becomes an immovable force. 
All right. And that's what we do. Okay. When we come together and we not only pray, um, but we take action. All right. Y'all ever wanted to be an action star? Well, you can be an action star now. All right. I, uh, you can be an action star and help me share this. Share the f out of it. Okay. Let's keep it family friendly, but let's share this. All right. Share it and let's make this an immovable force so that we get a living kidney donor somebody who's compassionate inspired healthy that wants to help extend her life all right let's do this together i know we can all right don't be stingy share this all right and and please like and subscribe all right if we if we get more subscribers this becomes more visible and it helps us so that we can get the stories out there more successfully all right so uh, thanks james um again thanks steve uh James from Dadvice TV, let's help her out. Post your ideas. You know, uh, I love that. We've I've talked about that. I've talked about this on past shows, um, talking about different ideas, magnets, um, car magnets, uh, also business cards, T-shirts, all sorts of different things. So please comment. Not only continue to comment about your support. Comment if you're a kidney warrior and you've had heart issues. Comment if you're a kidney warrior and you've also had PD. Uh, comment if you're on dialysis now. Um, comment below if you're not on dialysis, but you're close to it or you don't want to be on dialysis. Uh, comment in general so that we can make this more visible. Uh, and then, of course, <clears throat> you're welcome, Nicole. Um, if, what a pleasure. Um, she's got great energy. I uh, love her enthusiasm. Um, and she's uh, obviously somebody that that everybody it, it's an infectious personality. And I, you know, every guest means something to me, uh, but especially when they've got personality, it just it, it makes it more thrilling to me uh, because they, everybody like when they watch TV and then they, they can buy into a personality. And this is somebody, you know, that, that does that. All right. So please share this and let's get this let's bring this into fruition all right so let's yell it to the universe and let's make this happen together all right give her so much exposure that people see this on twitter on instagram uh, and they get it as a text message they get it on a snap on snapchat you know send it everywhere you can all right let's do this and make this an immovable force that's my call to action Let's do this together and make this an immovable force. You're welcome, Bertha. God bless you all. Thanks for making this successful. Thanks for making this happen for La Quea. And uh, don't stop. All right. Don't stop. All right. Action continues. Uh, we need, we've got a lot of work to be done. We need to continue to comment. We need to continue to share this and continue to comment tomorrow. Um, share this tomorrow um, on any other channels that you can. Share it with your friends, your neighbors, church church members. And let's do this, man. I, I can see this happening, all right? I want you all to envision this. Hey, I, I'm hoping that I can give you that same passion that I have so that we can just infect everybody, so to speak, all right, with this energy, the same energy that, and the same enthusiasm that she has, LaQuea. That's why I want all of us to have that same enthusiasm and energy so that we can get this out there. All right, man. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate and love, uh, have so much respect for your following. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to pay, I'm going to say peace. I'm out before I do. God bless. All right. I hope everybody had a safe um, and thankful holiday on Thanksgiving. And let's see, there's somebody I'd be. Oh, yes, yes. Willie Blackwell. All right. If he gets this, share it to Willie Blackwell if he's not watching right now and wish Willie Blackwell a happy birthday. All right. Willie, Elder Willie Blackwell. All right. Wish him a happy birthday. I know there's something on my mind that I wanted to say on this broadcast, and that is it. Um, happy birthday, Willie Blackwell. All right, guys. Peace. I'm out. This has been fun. Let's do this again, but continue to share and get this message out there for this kidney warrior. Thank you. Have a, have a good evening. Peace.